I've seen a lot of things said about this scout rifle, wide opinions. So with the review of it, I wanna talk about how it technically plays compared to how you think it should be played. That's MK or a controller, doesn't matter. Cause as a whole, MK is more accurate. I'll get into that, I'll talk about that. But what I wanna talk about, where it's good, where it's bad, the origin trait. There's some good roles to go for in PVE and PVP. The thing's awesome. It's a great weapon, I'm gonna show you how. There are roles that lean heavy into things for more of a fun factor. There's some great PVE roles with some interactions that I wanna show you. And I do believe that there is a universal role that brings out every aspect the scout has to offer. Everything that it does well and why you would want it is this role. I think it's pound for pound, technically the best. I see a lot of people calling it DMT at home. Nope, it's not even that. Sorry, you've yeed your last haul. Just separate those two right now. Just separate them. They're not the same. Don't even compare them. Because one of the things I want to do with this review, I needed to do with this review, is to try to break the mold of how this thing is widely viewed. For you to completely forget about what you've been sold on it and accept it for what it is, what it's good at, and how it's good at it. Because if you're using it a certain way, you're doing yourself a disservice. This 120 class, really? Break it down in a vacuum? High damage, high burst damage. Technically, it's best used with a team. Just like a 120 hand cannon, staying close, feeding off of each other. They have your back, you have their back, big damage. So with the biggest scout, I've always thought that these aggressives have had a great design. Again, DMT is its own thing. Same, same, but different. The design itself allows you to have a really cool option. This hip fire fantasy. When you see this DMT style, that's what you think of. But this thing and all others that are not named DMT, they only do the hip fire fantasy partially. So keep that in mind as I go on. This frame is built for hip fire. I'm gonna show you the application later on in the review. And one of the things that gets your mind spinning and wanting to do it is the origin trait, text balance stock. Damaging targets while firing from the hip increases handling, reload, and movement speed while aiming down sight. So this perk actually is really good, like massive buffs, but the trigger is not desirable at all. And that's a big part of the issue. The trigger for the perk, you think that you have to do this. You think you have to make this work. And if you don't, you have failed. That's not the case, because there's a second part to this perk. It takes four hits to proc it, meaning four back-to-back -back shots. When you do that, you see the text on the screen, you get those buffs. It's a lot better with explosive payload, because explosive payload counts as two hits at a time, meaning instead of four straight shots, you only need two. But the full loop for this perk, what it actually wants you to do, not just get it started, what it wants you to do, once you proc text balance stock, it's up for four seconds, and you can extend it by landing another hip fire shot. So just one. If you land another hip fire shot, it resets it back to four seconds. So how it works fully, what it wants you to do is land four shots, get the origin trait procced on your screen, you get all those buffs, and you're using those buffs, the fast aim down sights, strafing faster, big handling, and importantly, big reload buffs, landing shots however you want, but at least one of those within four seconds needs to be another hit fire shot. When you land that hit fire shots, it extends the timer back. So yeah, the total loop, you're aiming down sights, you're fast, you're reloading fast, you're hip firing a shot. And when you do that, it is really, really fun. It is not meant for you just to hit fire your little heart out. One more time, this weapon is not meant for you to hit fire your little heart out. It just does not work. In PVE, sure, you can get it going, but as you can imagine, and as you've probably seen, pretty hard to get going in the Crucible, not even consistently, just once or twice a game. More on that later. In the third column, Discord, great perk. And you might be thinking on a primary, yes. Definitely on a primary, more on that later. In line to action, it's great perk, just land shots, get a faster reload and handling. Demo, great perk, and it has a perfect pairing mate in the other column, keep away, get a fast reload, plus 10 range. Your follow-up shots are more accurate, there's a lot to like, hip fire. On this, you're gonna wanna consider it, controller or MNK. It is S tier for what this frame allows you to do. I mean, look at the benefits. It makes a lot of sense. And as I go through how this weapon can really shine with its hip fire, it's gonna make a little bit more sense. We have outlawed rapid hit. Both are fine. Rapid hit is preferred because of the stability. In the final column, now getting into pairings, cascade point. Get a kill with another weapon, switch to it. You get a faster fire rate. Enough to get this thing to a 0.6 TTK. The perfect pairing is Discord, like this roll right here. Not because you get ammo back. That's not it. It's because Discord also grants a massive massive handling scaler and accuracy scaler. It gives like quick draw and no joke legit, it gives five times what opening shot gives as far as accuracy cone growth. It is insane on that front. Like look at Cascade Discord versus a Blade Fury. Continue to be my greatest success, Guardian. Straight up, that player has never been killed faster from that far from one player using a primary weapon. Guaranteed. 
And this is a game where crits matter. There's less special. So this scout can still do its thing from a distance. And you can still use a shotgun, an SMG, a sidearm, whatever. Get those close quarters kills and then unleash it with Cascade. As you just saw with that clip in these clips. Cascade is definitely an option, especially in this sandbox. Explosive Payload, really, really good for it. PVE, that damage bullet is split. 30% more damage on that split. It has two hits for the origin trait, so two shots gets you it. Explosive Payload on Scout, I mean, especially like versus champions, it's always been a great solid perk. PVP, there's Flinch. We have a universal 15% reduction in Flinch coming soon, so perks like this are gonna stand out a little bit more. Golden Tricorn, it's goaded. Here's the deal with Golden Tricorn, and I have another video I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth with later on at some point. But a stasis golden tricorn weapon is wild. I'm not sure if you've ever been told that or if you don't know like what can really go on with that. It's nuts, it's bonkers, insane. Like YouTube wide open mouth. Because golden tricorn, you get the kill, 50% more damage. That lasts for seven seconds. And within seven seconds, if you get an ability kill, you go to golden tricorn too, it's 50% more damage. But when you run a glacier grenade on stasis, when that glacier grenade gets a kill, like let's say you shoot it and the shatter gets a kill, that procs golden tricorn too. On stasis, if you're a veteran, the stasis abilities can fly. The shards fragment, just shattering crystals gets you a grenade fast. There's osmio, there's all these different things to get that grenade up. And better yet, you can pair the combo, demolitionist golden tricorn. You have golden tricorn too, just absolutely deleting ads. That's getting you nade energy. All of your shatter kills from your glacier grenade are granting grenade energy as well. It is great. Oh yeah, in the Crucible, if you're using a Golden Tricorn Stasis weapon, you get a kill, and let's say you just Shatter Dive someone. That's Golden Tricorn times two, and on this thing, it two taps. We have Headstone, same deal, like same, same, but different. Headstone alone is fine. Demo Headstone, because all the kills you get from shooting the crystal, those Shatter kills count as Demo, just like how the Shatter kills count as Golden Tricorn. So we've seen it on other weapons, it's tried and true. It's very good for Stasis builds if you've used this combination. It just really accelerates your grenade. Offhand Strike. The deal with this, the combo of hit fire offhand strike is something to go for because that's the heavy lean. That's the hit fire fantasy. The origin trait doesn't really like fully work, play into that fantasy. And controller, sorry. Like if you get that roll tried out, this will probably make you put the weapon down forever. You're gonna be disappointed. M and K, you're gonna get a lot more use out of it. More on this at the end of the video. Very important at the end of the video. So kill clip, that's the outlier. As I'm getting towards the end of the video here, I'm not gonna say that this weapon is a bad weapon or it is mid because it's not, it's actually pretty great. And this perk is a big reason why. That kill on this frame, it's got a fast reload into it. You can start two tapping, a 0.5 TTK. In no world is that bad. In no world could you ever call that bad. That is unique, that is something to try and get. It's got a two tap up to eight resilience. And if you run a stasis search mod and you're charged, it'll down any resilience at a two tap. Very, very powerful for a 0.5 at nearly any distance. The base range on this thing is like 79 meters. That's not adding any range at all. So you're gonna be okay. Precision instrument, it's okay. It's no DMT. On this weapon, it's more PVE, I think. Maybe you want it for PVP overshields and such. Go right ahead. Here's the deal, guys. This weapon, the main issue with it is that what you think it's supposed to be, it isn't. It just isn't. It's not even DMT at home. Separate the two. And since it isn't, it's viewed as a letdown. Or I couldn't get this going or that going. And yeah, you probably didn't. Especially a lot of people trying to get even the origin trait going without explosive payload. And to all of you that try, good luck doing that. It's definitely not a constant thing that you're gonna have. So stop hip firing with this thing just for one second. Let's take a step back. Let's just take it for what it is, go from there. And I think you're gonna have a different experience because the frame does allow you to do cool things. Because what I see as I started with, it is a weapon that does a lot of things right. This 120, take away it being a scout. I do view it similar to a 120 hand cannon with more range, more burst damage. It can peak shot pretty effectively due to how you can use it with its recoil, stability, its design. It is great in a team setting. It's great for burst damage, but this hip fire part, and this is kind of aside from MNK players using that super hip fire offhand roll, that roll for the most part is just a fun roll to have. Like otherwise, just forget about it. You're going in this long chain, just beaming people from the hip. It's not happening. But with how it is built, it is built for hip fire. But the issue is the game isn't. There is inaccuracy, there is bloom, there is flinch. And pretty much wherever you are, M and K or controller, follow up hip fire shots will fail you. They're gonna flat out fail you and they're gonna make you hate the weapon. Like right here, I am directly on the head. The second shot, even the little dot over the head, like I am there, it blanks. What I wanna show you, that hip fire fantasy is still there. Again, with how it's built, how it's designed, you can feel very confident in the first shot Let's remember, the first shot is the most accurate it's gonna be. That's your initial accuracy. 
and initial accuracy on this frame is very good. Insanely good. It's the follow-up shots that are bad, because if you're centering well, running around with that crosshair open where players should be coming from, if you want to take that shot, you can feel good about it. If you're coming up into an area, your sight's open, but your centering's good, you can get a good hip fire shot in. Or maybe you're running kill clip. Right after that reload, you should still be centering, tracking them. You can just instantly hip fire that shot. That is where this thing is good. These types of situations. And then of course, you can go into kill clip. Like this thing is great. Other weapons can't do it quite like this. And this, I feel, is one of the bigger things on what makes it good. You having that option. And then there's things like Tricorn, Demo, Cascade. I showed you some of the gameplay of some of these things. Like, all that stuff is good. And in the beginning, I talked about a universal role. A role that kind of brings everything special out of it. It's this. It's hip fire, kill clip. Everything considered. Long distance, high range, high damage. Surprisingly snappy for a scout rifle. And also, when changing weapons, it has that whip to it. Besides the point, that's cool. But this role, it allows you to obtain what makes this thing special overall. The 0.5 TTK, the 0.5 is one of the main reasons to get this thing. It's special, it's unique, nothing does that. And all this time I've talked about that first hip fire shot being so good and accurate. It's overall initial hip fire accuracy, even taking long shots with it. This is what I'm talking about, using hip fire grip for that. You have the option to do that. Lethal in a team setting, lethal to chain kills, quick high damage burst shots from the hip, but what I want to leave you with, again, one more time, the moment that you follow up a hip fire shot with another, it will fail you. It's going to straight up fail you. And yes, time to time, you will pull it off. It's going to feel great. But most of the time, it's going to make you hate it. The weapon is built to hip fire, but not the full fantasy that you're thinking of or want. But with what it can do, the perks that it has, I don't think that it's mid. I think it's pretty great. It does a lot of good things. And the most important thing you can do with it, that hip fire shot, it doesn't matter if you hit or miss. Your next shot after it needs to be aiming down sights. If you do that, I think you're gonna have a lot better time with it. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Let's talk about the profit down below. I do enjoy these 120s and I'm a controller player. And you've seen the things that I'm doing with it and the overall lethality this particular one has, the 0.5s, the cool things in PVE. I would love to hear your thoughts though. But one thing's for sure, everyone thinks of this as, a Again, that cowboy yeehaw fantasy and it's just not except that it's not it has the qualities it does it partially but you can still use those things to your advantage let's talk about it down below thank you for watching and until the next one i am cool guy